This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. This is Sarah, and I just want to take a moment to speak to you about this week's sponsor, Favor. Favor, Inc. is a statewide family-led nonprofit 501c3 organization that is committed to empowering families as advocates and partners in improving educational and health outcomes for our children. Favor is the Connecticut State Organization of the Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health. Favor offers a single place for families with children who have medical, mental, emotional, and behavioral health challenges to find information, assistance, and training. To find out more about Favor, please go to favor-ct.org. We are grateful for our opportunity to work with Favor as a sponsor, and now on to the rest of the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Chronicles. My name is Sarah, and today I'm here with my husband, Jeremy. Hello. And this week is our family update for May 2022. Woohoo! And this episode is scheduled to air on the 22nd of May. Yeah, we're doing it a week early because of the Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Um, we have the holiday weekend coming up. That being said, we'll still have a new episode. I just want to have time to record and edit and do whatever it is we plan on doing. We have stuff planned for the holiday weekend. So I want to have time to record and edit, you know, before the holiday weekend so we can do the things we want to do that weekend. Right? Yay! So you may have noticed a new addition to our intro. Yeah! We are now sponsored by Favor. I am so excited about this sponsorship and this partnership. I started, and I really, like, that's like kind of our main topic, I guess, for this week's episode, right? Yeah, that'd be that's the big thing that's happened for us. Yeah, for our family update and our podcast update. So I started going to a support group that was actually hosted by Favor um, or by Lisa, who is coming on my podcast July 3rd. You'll hear from her then. And I started going to the support group way before I started Caregiver Chronicles, way before the pandemic just a while ago I was afraid I was really afraid to go into a support group and into that setting because I don't like it when people cry and I know like like I just don't like being around a lot of crying and a lot of heavy emotions I have a hard time I don't know I don't know what the right word is I have a hard time sometimes when people are crying saying the right things Uh, usually I try to make them laugh and I know that that might not have been appropriate and I just, I'm not always comfortable in those situations. So I was afraid. I was, plus, you know, moms on the internet are moms on the internet. I was on like autism mom support groups on Facebook and things like that. And there was just a lot of negativity in those and a lot of arguing and a lot of oh my god you give your kids juice boxes or you do this or you do that or whatever whatever kind of things you could mom shame someone for that was there and in this support group there wasn't any of that but all of that other stuff led me to be very afraid to go to one yeah I could certainly understand that uh you know the internet it can be a dark and scary place yes um, and this support group was for parents, not just moms. Yes, I went to a few of them as well when her mother could come and watch the boys. All that was pre-pandemic, of course. Yeah, and how did you feel going to them? I felt fine. I never had an issue with it. It was more just a case of uh, having someone to watch the boys so both of us could attend. If uh, we, you know, if we didn't have a babysitter, I was home with the boys because you know they we couldn't leave them by themselves, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We could not do that. So there was there was a little bit of that, but going to the support group really, 
I don't know, it just really, it really helped me. It really validated a lot of things. It got me connected to resources that I wasn't even aware of in the area. And, you know, it's all thanks to Lisa, um, my friend Lisa from Favor. It's all thanks to her. And because of that connection and our conversations and working together and communicating with each other and her being a person that I can reach out to and, you know, just, just developing, just, just opening lines of communication and developing like, you know, a friendship and and an understanding and just like a really great person. She's just a great person to confide in. And so that development grew into, hey, you know, Sarah, you're doing something great with Caregiver Chronicles. I want to write an article about it. So she wrote an article in the Favor newsletter, and I did share that on our social media. And then that led to a conversation about her realizing, you know, we weren't, we didn't have any sponsors. We were just doing this on our own um, with no financial backing. And her reaching out and saying, hey, you know, uh, maybe Favor could sponsor you and putting that idea out and putting that out into the universe and just letting it, I don't know, just throwing the idea out there. And worst case scenario, it was a no because that puts us in no different of a place than we were in. That was what I said in the beginning. I didn't really think it was going to happen, but I was like, it could. And I remember saying to my husband, like, if it's a no, we just keep doing what we're doing, right? Yeah, that's what exactly what we do. And so we did. We put it out there and it happened. And so now we have our first sponsor and it's through this connection. And it's, I'm so grateful for Lisa and for Favor and for this connection because I don't, it just, there's, and there's so much more besides the sponsorship aspect. There's the connections, there's the support, there's when I'm having a bad day or when something's going on with one of my kids and it's something that maybe I don't want to go public with. I can talk to Lisa and she can point me in the right direction of where to go as a support group leader. So I'm incredibly grateful for just doing this in meeting with her. Yes, uh, that she's been a wonderful help to us. Favor has been a wonderful help to us. We're happy for this partnership. We're happy to have this sponsorship. They do wonderful things and we're happy to get the word out. Yes, they do amazing things for the community. So I just wanted to share with you guys how that all like came about and why we have a sponsor and how we got a sponsor and how proud and excited I am about it. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And the next thing I wanted to share with you guys is, you know, support groups. I wanted to talk a little bit about that and how it can be intimidating to walk into a room full of strangers and talk about things that are wrong with you, your family, your life, whatever it may be. And I use that term wrong kind of loosely. Just things that aren't perfect. Things that aren't the way... Things that maybe aren't meeting our expectations. And it can be... It can make you feel very vulnerable and isolated. Because especially your first visit, you know, people in this group have all been going for a little while. And most of them have gotten to know each other. So where do I fit in? You know, is the question. Where do I fit in with this group? But let me tell you something. There's nothing more validating than talking to somebody who has been in a position similar to yours. So I highly recommend to my audience that, you know, if you're caring for your mom with Alzheimer's or if you're going through a medical situation yourself or if you're caring with a child with special needs, developmental or behavioral needs, if you yourself are struggling with depression, anxiety, Um, there's support groups for people with attention deficit disorder. There's support groups for adults on the autism spectrum at, you know, various support levels and things like that. So if you yourself is struggling or having a hard time trying to figure out where you fit in, where your place is, or where you need to be, I highly recommend you find a support group. And I'm going to list some resources right now for you. The first place where you can a lot of times find a support group, Google. You can search on Google support group for blank near me. You can also reach out to 211. They will they have lists of resources, support groups in your area. Caring.com is great for family caregivers. AARP gives off support groups mostly targeted toward senior citizens, senior care. 
caregiver.org is another resource that can point you to a support group. Um, Bill Cohen from Cohen Caregivers, we've had him on our podcast, uh, what was it, like last year, right? Yeah, sometime last year. Yeah, it was about last year. He's wonderful, by the way. I still connect with him on Facebook. He has a Facebook support group, and his support group is great. Um, So if you go back into our episodes, you will find all the links for that. Uh, Debbie, who we just had last week, her support group, Caregiving Support Squad, again, is also on Facebook. And, you know, you can you can search and connect, and it's a really great support group as well. You can call your health insurance. A lot of times they have a line in the back. I know ours does where you can, you can call, like, a hotline. A lot of times there's people from health insurance who can actually connect you to resources in your area. Um, and there are some support groups that that are clinical ones that have counselors and stuff like that that have that that are covered by insurance so you'd go and it would be group therapy in addition to individual therapy that's always a great idea um, doctor's offices a lot of times the receptionist or the doctor at your doctor's office can connect you to a support group and you're you know if you have a counselor or anyone like that that you speak to a lot of times they can help connect you and those are just some of the ways to get connected to a support group in your area. Yes, and I, we advise anybody, if you feel like you need help, reach out to a support group. It's done wonders for a lot of people, so please just reach out. And, and again, this is like, for me, this was something that I was so hesitant to do in the beginning. Do you remember that? Do you remember me saying, I don't want to go and go in a room full of people crying and have to deal with a bunch of other moms and... Not, not that there's anything wrong with other moms, but, you know, I just didn't want to do that. I was really adamant against it in the beginning. Yep, and then it wound up being one of the best things for you, which is why I recommend anyone who is just in need of help, reach out. Absolutely. And I was also, like, really stubborn. That's nothing new. And independent. But, yeah, I just, I again, I highly highly recommend you guys you know wherever you are in your caregiving journey new mom journey if you're struggling with burnout depression whatever it is there is there is a group and you know right now these groups are open again and if you don't feel comfortable there's still a lot of them being hosted via zoom the pandemic has really taught us that we can do more and reach a wider audience via zoom with support groups there's just that extra way to connect or maybe if you're afraid to go in person, maybe a Zoom one is less intimidating. Absolutely. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, you know, like I said, I want to share important resources because that's what we do here at Caregiver Chronicles. We share resources. We connect caregivers. We share stories. All that stuff. You know because you listen. And once a month, we like to talk about our family. Anyway, I want to talk about right now Remy. We have a lot of stuff going on with him. He's kind of... He's been the primary focus right now um, with some stuff going on with him. He's doing phenomenal in track. It, well, I don't want to say that. That's an exaggeration. That's uh, hyperbole. Yes. Well, uh, in the races himself, he has finished uh, basically next to last in every single race. But he, the effort he's putting in has been phenomenal. He's working hard. He's getting better. And when things happen that normally frustrate him... In this setting, he's able to internalize that frustration and push him to do better rather than getting upset. Yes. Mentally, he is doing phenomenal in track. Physically, he's one of the littler kids on the team. He's one of the last kids. He's also making friends with um, some kids on the track team. He was telling me about an eighth grade boy who, when other kids are picking on him, Tell, he'll, he'll tell the other kids, hey, leave Remy alone. When other kids are telling Remy, like, oh, you can't do that. He's like, well, I saw him run cross country. He did great. Um, and just, you know, this kid is just being a, a good role model. This older boy is being a good role model for Remy. And I just am really appreciative of that. So, you know, that's kind of like one thing that's going on. That's the good thing going on with Remy. Yes. And kind of that's kind of been a highlight for all of us to watch him at the track meets, and just to see him again, just to see him start something. He does what does he do? The sixteen hundred, so the one mile. Yeah, he does the sixteen hundred and the eight hundred, so the mile and the half mile. Yeah, and he averages about seven minutes. Yeah, about a seven minute mile, which I I mean I would be dead 
<laughs> so, you know, good for him. I'm proud of him. But, yeah, he's one of the slower kids on the team. But, you know what, he's he's got a good pace. He's trying his best. If he gets passed or lapped or finishes last, he doesn't flip out. He just, like, keeps going. He's like, I want to get all the points I can for my team. And he wants to stay and cheer his teammates on, which is really good sportsmanship on his behalf. So I'm really proud of him mentally for that. Um, the struggle we're having with him right now is our school district Sucks. Is- I don't want to say that. Okay, let me rephrase that. The school district itself does not suck, but the school district does not have enough to meet the needs he requires, and our Board of Education sucks. Our school district Board of Ed was in Rolling Stone magazine article recently for not wanting to help students with behavioral and mental health services. And my kid is falling victim to that lack of services and it really like jeremy said sucks there's no other way to to phrase it i've been attending board of ed meetings i am not at every one a lot of times i come home from them sad sick to my stomach and in tears because of just just the bureaucracy and the politics of it um and because of all of this we got a call a couple weeks ago from one of the counselors that works with remy on a regular basis that he feels like Remy just cannot, like, killingly just does not have the resources to support our kid anymore. Like, like the town just does not have the resources. And that we need to look at other schools in the area, like outplacement schools. So we are starting that process of looking at other schools. So I'm asking my Caregiver Chronicles audience right now, I do know a few parents that I've talked to, but... You know, if you've ever been in that position where, you, you know, you've had your student or your child outplaced to a school outside of their public school district, please let me know how that worked for you. I know one of the big concerns is he still wants to participate in sports because that has been a good thing for him. And the track coach has even come up to me and said, hey, you know, he's doing a phenomenal job here as far as behaviorally. I know he's having a hard time throughout the day, but at track, he's like a whole different kid. So... If we can keep that piece, maybe we can integrate him back sooner and keep him together better. Plus, you know, exercise is good for everybody. So there's there's all of those factors that we're trying to advocate. So if you're a parent or a friend, a listener who's gone through this and you have any advice or anything like that, that you know that we don't know or you've been through it, we would love to hear your story. We would love to communicate with you. We'd love to get tips. Um, we just we just would really appreciate it. So reach out to us. Yes, please. But that's kind of where we're at with that. You want to talk about Joey? Or do you want me to talk about Joey? Well, Joey recently had a field trip that Mommy accompanied on him on. So I'm going to let her talk about it. I just <laughs> wanted to say hi, uh, hi and uh, uh, mention Joey. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, oh my God, it was the cutest thing. We went on a little field trip to see the dinosaurs with Joey um, with his class and it was just the cutest thing I was so grateful I got the opportunity to go to keep Joey safe I have to keep him on a harness leash or he will take off and so we had his angel sense gps tracker on him and we had his honor- harness leash on him because I knew if I didn't have those things he would be trying to take off and we just had such a nice day on the field trip he really liked it he had no meltdowns, no episodes. He did good for transitions. There was one thing that scared him a little bit, but then he was fine after. We walked around the gift shop. He really liked the gift shop. And I got him a little, um, like a little hand puppet dinosaur thing, and he really enjoyed that. So after that field trip, oh, and we split a milkshake. That was fun, too. And after that field trip, Remy had a track meet. And I want to share this story with you all because there are some really good people out there. There are some people who are, like, terrible, and there are some really great people. And I want us all to keep in mind these good people. So we were at the track meet, and mind you, this poor kid had a field trip all day. It was warm. It was a very warm day. And the track meet goes, they go for a couple hours. So More like three to four hours. Yeah. So Joey was getting overstimulated. And fortunately for me, some teachers who had worked with Joey were there for some of it. So, like, it was kind of nice to see them there because 
there was there was that sense of like other people knew Joey and um we were watching Jeremy run something happened and a uh, kiddo on the team fell and got hurt a lot of people were a lot of kids were kind of getting upset a lot of you know parents there was a lot of like anxiety after that and a lot of concern for the boy that fell and got hurt pretty bad while we're at the meet Joey starts to get agitated he's you know he's picking up on other people's emotions which I've noticed he does but also he had a long day so he's already a little bit overstimulated well now he's getting really overstimulated he's really clinging to me he wants me to just carry him and hold him the whole time and I'm doing my best but it's like I can only carry him for so much time and then I have to put him down and take a break because you know he's 50 pounds he's heavy and so we're there we're at the meet he's getting agitated and then I knew it was it was almost time for Remy's race but the tears started and the crying and the screaming and the meltdown started so Joey is now in full-blown meltdown we're off. I try to get as far away from as many people as I can, but where I can still see Remy and cheer him on. There's another dad there, and he's like, it's fine. Your kiddo's not bothering me. Don't worry. Like, you know, you're doing your best, and, you know, just I applaud you. You're a good mom. You're trying. So, which was really kind of him. So I stay as far away from the crowd as I can with Joey while he's agitated. Remy finish, finishes his race. And I go to get him because it was his last race. And I'm like, Remy, we gotta, we've got to go. Your brother's having a meltdown. We've got to leave. And he just lost it. He, so now I got Joey screaming and now I got Remy screaming. Why do we have to leave? This isn't fair. I'm going to get in trouble. Remy, we got to go. Your brother's really agitated. He's screaming, just leave me here. I'm like, I cannot do that. I don't have another parent of yours with me or another trusted adult that can claim responsibility for you while I take Joey um to the car for a drive so I I wanted to cry guys so I'm leaving now mind you like a quarter of the town is there both my kids are screaming one of them is just full-on meltdown the other one is just screaming this isn't fair I don't want to go I want to cheer my teammates you know all the no, so I'm like trying to carry Joey out of there, keep Remy close by. They're both screaming. Joey's fighting and flipping out. It's getting Joey more agitated. Joey's getting Remy more agitated. I'm almost, I'm so, I don't know where I'm at at this point. I'm at the point where I'm about to either cry or laugh, and usually I laugh um, when I hit this point. And there was one mom who was just so sweet, but I was just at the point where I was just so used to the meltdowns that I didn't even know how to explain it, that I wasn't as phased by it as I guess I appeared in that moment. I was just like, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. And they're just both screaming. And the mom's like, she's like, do you want me to walk you to the car? I'm like, no, I'm good, I got this. And I should have accepted the help, but I didn't. But I was able to get them both in the car. But she was like, if you ever need help at these meets, just come find me. She's like, I got blue hair. She did have beautiful blue hair. And she was like, I understand I'm a mom too, you know, which was really sweet. I didn't, I mean, I noticed a look here and there from people. There's always going to be that. And I really just didn't care in that moment. It was more the mom who, the one that, the biggest impact on me now, because I'm so used to the looks and the meltdowns. And it's just always going to be, is the mom who said, hey, you know, can I walk you to your car? Can I walk you and the kids to the car? That, to me, made more of an impact because I hear that less than anything else. And that just meant so much to me. And I just, I don't know that mom's name. I didn't make it to the last meet. So I couldn't, like, go over and say hi and thank you. Um, but I'm grateful. Yes. She'll probably never hear this, but... <laughs> Yes, but in those moments, it's always good to be. Uh, it's uh, we're always grateful when somebody decides to be kind and to be helpful because it, it's a lot. And you know, more often than not, we get the looks of "What are you doing wrong?" Be, just because our kids have autism, rather than just saying, "Hey, you know, maybe we can reach out and help." Yeah, and you know, in it, in neurotypical kids have episodes in grocery stores or in public places like it just they're kids it happens and it's just you know it's just a matter of 
how can we not judge each other? How can we be more supportive as people to make the world a better place so everybody can be included, feel included, and be forgiven when they're having a bad day? Yeah, uh, that just be kind. That's the best I can tell you. Be exactly. Kind. Be kind. Um, so I did, I did want to share that story. I just, I don't know. It just hit. It was kind of important. And I think, I think I called you from the truck. Yes. Yes, you did. I was driving home. She's like, how far away are you? Multiple times. She refused to get out of the truck until I got home. I was like, yeah, well, everyone was calm though. Eh. Remy was still screaming. Well, Remy was still screaming, but Joey was calm. So I just sat in the truck for a little while, like, and he like... I don't think I was in the driveway for, like, two minutes before you pulled in, though. I think you were, like, maybe two minutes behind me. And I just sat in the truck for a minute and was just, like, catching my breath. I don't know what I did after. Didn't I leave? I don't remember what you did either. (laughs) I think I left them with you. I think I went to the grocery store or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, something something like that. I was like, ah, get me away. I gave Joey a shower, gave them their nighttime, (laughs) you know. Gave him his medicine, gave Remy his medicine, and, and, you know, sent them to bed. Yeah, it was, but it was also getting, like, again, it was also getting late. Joey had the field trip. And I'm not, I, again, I'm not defend. I'm not defending the meltdown. I'm explaining the cause because I know the trigger. I know it was going to happen. And there are times where you just can't avoid it. It's just going to happen. And it just is. So that was kind of that was kind of something I wanted to share with you guys. That was kind of a big moment, I guess, a big day. Big day indeed. Yeah, but it was fun because the field trip went good, and you know Remy, Remy stuck it out in his meat, even though he got lapped. He didn't get mad. He didn't cry. He just kept running, and so I was really proud of him for that. And that brings us with the family update to you. Yes, so uh, as you heard last time, I have been nominated for a New England Journalism Morning Newscast Emmy. Uh, We will find out on June 4th if I won or not. That's when the ceremony is. We will be going to the ceremony, so I had to go get a fancy new suit uh, so that I could look fancy enough to be there. Uh, There was a mix-up in Macy's, and they actually gave me the wrong size pants initially. I had to go all the way back and get the right ones. My waist is a 38. They gave me a 33. So I'm guessing they were just looking kind of fast because a 3 and an 8 look can look similar if you, you're speeding through. Yeah, I through. think they were busy that day because isn't it like close to prom season and yes, graduation season and everything? Close yeah, to prom they, were, season. they were pretty busy when we were in Macy's that day. Yeah, so I got a fancy uh, new suit. She's got a fancy new dress. I bought two dresses. She's got two fancy new dresses. Okay. And, you know, we're going to be spending the weekend in Boston. We are. We're going to we're going to actually do like I said we're or like Jeremy said, we're going to go to the Emmys and I did get two dresses and we will post pictures. I think we should post pictures on our Instagram. Sounds good. At the Emmys on the Caregiver Chronicles Instagram and Facebook. So if you guys want to see Emmy pictures, let us know. Um comment on our episode post or email us say, "Hey, yeah, we want to see those pictures and we will definitely put them out there for you guys." Because we're excited and, you know, we're definitely going to take this moment in because this is, not a lot of people get this opportunity and I'm really excited about it. I know it's his award, but I'm excited about it. I'm also excited about the weekend away in the break. And I did order two dresses because I ordered them from Amazon and one was, they were both really cheap. One was like $26, beautiful navy dress. And then the other one, I think, was like $45. And again, it was navy blue. You guys sensing a theme with my color scheme? Navy blue and pink. It's like the navy blue dress with all the rose gold accessories. But the dress that I decided I'm not going to wear, I have decided I'm going to donate it to a charity that gives dresses to girls like that maybe can't afford a prom dress. So I wanted to make sure that I give back a little bit, but... We're so excited about the opportunity to go to the Emmys, or at least I am. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited for the weekend away. It's been a long time since we've had that, since well before the pandemic. And, you know, I am I hope to win. I'm in a group award. I got a great team. That's why we're nominated. And I just, I hope we win because I want the recognition for my team more so than myself, honestly, because we work really hard. And I think everybody I work with deserves the recognition. That's awesome, babe. That's really sweet. But yeah, I'm excited. And congratulations to all of your team and everybody who was nominated. 
So I'm again, I'm just excited to get a weekend away and to be fancy for a change. So but that's that's that. And I guess the last person in our family update that we got to update you guys on is myself, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't really do anything. I just kind of take long naps and drink wine. No, I'm just kidding. I wish that was what my day was like, but it's not. You know, most of my days as a mostly stay-at-home special needs mom involved phone calls to doctor's offices, insurance companies. Uh, Who else do I like to talk to? I like to talk to the school. I talk to them all the time. They're always calling me. Schools, doctor's offices, insurance companies, pharmacies, support groups. Anybody and everybody you can think of, I'm on the phone with. Uh, that's that's how I spend most of my day. But and then booking guests for Caregiver Chronicles. Booking guests, recording. Um, I've had I've been recording like crazy, which which is good because this puts us at a point where we have content planned through the summer, so we don't have to record other than our family updates through the summer. So this will give us a little bit of a break, and it'll give me time to it'll give me time to enjoy the summer with my kids and. If I have to take them places, I can take them to, like, the library and wherever else. Also, therapy appointments is a big part of my day. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. But I still make sure that I'm making time to do things for myself. And one of the things that I did for myself is I know our last family update, I talked about how I got my final Reiki attunement for a Sui Reiki. Well, I have been, while I was waiting for that final attunement for a Sui Reiki, I have been studying Karuna Key Reiki and studying that level of Reiki, which is a more expansive level of Reiki, which I'm super excited that I was able to get my attunement for Karuna Key Reiki just this past week. And I, I'm just really thrilled about that. That's been a huge thing for me. This is something I've always wanted to do for years. I wanted to learn Reiki and learn how to Use it to heal myself, help others, help myself emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And I gotta say, since I really, I don't know, just the feelings I've had with the Corona Reiki and like the positivity and the life-changing positivity that it's had for me even more than the Asui. The Asui Reiki is great. The Corona Key Reiki, I, again, I had to study and learn more symbols, learn more about it. I just had an overwhelming feeling of peace that day and um just just compassion and peace and love and it's just been really good for me so I'm really proud of that achievement another big change I've made since you know since our last family update is I joined a gym and I spent a lot of time last year focusing on my emotional and mental health and then I started looking into and focusing on my spiritual health like the reiki and things like that and this the part of myself that i'm not taking it as good care of is my physical health i am not eating as good as i used to and i'm nowhere near as physically active as i was and i'm feeling it so you know it wasn't it was kind of a duh decision for me to join the gym and start exercising again i've tried to exercise at home I just, for whatever reason, I just cannot do it. I, there's too many other things for me to do here that I just can't focus enough at home. So when I'm in the gym, I know that this is a place, and it could just be because of my ADHD and my neurodivergence. I'm not sure why I have to be this way. I just am. But this is a place where the only thing I am supposed to do here is exercise. And so that's what I've been going to do. And I gotta say, I have taken it slow. I've listened to my body. If something hurt, I either went down a weight or I just didn't do it. I'm really proud of how I feel physically right now. I Obviously, I didn't lose a bunch of weight. I've only been going for about a week and a half. But I feel good in a sense of I feel like I'm doing that missing piece for myself in my self-care routine. That exercise. And I always stress to other people how important exercise is and eating well is. And I never do it for me. So that's the missing piece in, for me, right now anyway, in my self-care routine. Yeah, she seems to be in a lot better mood most of the time uh, because she's taking care of herself. She looks healthier 
you know, we do need to eat better. She's right. But she's and she seems a lot happier. I have. And it's, you know, in there's also a social aspect. Like I've been going to the gym with a friend and that's good because there's that, you know, socialization aspect, which I don't feel isolated. That is one thing I have to say about me in comparison to a lot of other caregivers. I don't feel the isolation a lot of caregivers feel right now. Because I have family and friends who call me almost every day and check in on me. I have a good friend I talk to almost every day. My sister and I call each other almost daily. My mom and my aunt. Those are my like, those are my like people. So because, because of their calls, they're like daily or every other day or frequent check-ins on me. I feel, I don't feel isolated even when I am a little bit isolated Um, But meeting up with a friend at the gym is always good too. And I know not every caregiver has that luxury. And I I really do know that. If you can just set aside, and I know even, even if you could just take a walk, take a walk with the person you care for. If they have to walk in a, in a wheelchair, if you have to push them in a wheelchair and just go around the neighborhood or whatever you got to do, you know, make sure you're taking care of that physical part of your health too, because your physical health is just as important as your mental health and your emotional health and your social health and your spiritual health because without those things, you cannot care for someone else. Like, you have to have all of those cups full and there's so many layers. How all of those types of health help each other. Yes, absolutely. So, and I made you exercise. Well, yeah, I wanted to exercise anyway, so it was fun. Do you want to tell them about you and Remy stretching? Ah, yes. Uh, Every morning, this is part back to both me and Remy, uh, trying to help him out. I would get up in the mornings when he uh, goes uh, goes to school. He has to get up at 530, so I'd get up with him. And so to try to help loosen him up and to, you know, try to help him not be so tense because he says he wakes up already in a tense ball of energy every day. So he, we taught him, told him to do his stretches that he's been doing before track. And so I get up with him and I stretch with him. And quite frankly, I felt a lot better after doing that too. So I think that's something we're going to continue even during the summer. Yeah. And I think that that's great. And so they get up and stretch and me, I get up and get my little rear end to the gym, which is not, and I'm not a morning person, but I look forward to it. No, but that's basically what's going on with us. And like I said, like, Health is not, your your health is not one size fits all. And there's so many different aspects to mental health, physical health. You know, they do correlate, but so does social and emotional health. And so does your spiritual health. And filling all of the cups as full as you can get them that day is really just been super beneficial. So I just, I can't say that enough. And, you know, even a support group is great for your social health. So I'm so glad that we talked about all of that on this episode. So next week, we have some really great episodes coming up, guys. Next week, I have Dr. Kevin Payne coming on. Um, He is a psychiatrist. He has multiple sclerosis, and he jumps out of airplane. That interview was so awesome to me to do it, and it was really cool to listen to him talk about parachuting and hear his story. It's It's a really good one. There were moments that I almost got emotional but didn't. Renee Schreier is going to be on the following week, June 5th. I'm so excited for this one. Her, I I really liked her. Her her and her husband's book, well, it's mostly her husband's book, but she has a lot of input in it, called It's Not a Rumor. I read the book. I, I mean, it was, it's so good. He, he lived such a... You know, he's still alive, but he had such a fascinating life. He, he was in a rock band. And you're going to hear all of that in that story. And it's just so great. And then we have Bridget coming up who has just, she's just so sweet. I had such a great interview with her. I'm really excited about my interviews that I have coming up. And our next family update will be June 19th. And I, I don't know if we'll post on our social media beforehand, but... We will definitely, I think we will post on our social media if you win or not. Yes. I think we we have to. Yes. Even if we don't, I think we still should because we still win by being there and getting a break. It's still win. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. You'll probably know before if you follow us on social media, but if you are only a listener, 
we will we will share it on the 19th and we'll share all the fun stories of Emmy weekend and everything else. And with that, that concludes this week's episode of Caregiver Chronicles. You can find us on Facebook at Caregiver Chronicles, on Instagram at Caregiver Chronicles 2, uh, on Twitter at Caregiver Cron 1. Also, if you, if anything we said really resonated with you or you know somebody who really needs to hear this, please share this episode with a friend. Share any of our episodes with a friend. We appreciate that. Share all um, of our episodes with a friend. Yeah, it helps us out a lot and we just really appreciate that. Give us a like and a review the reviews that I read when I get them, they mean so much to me. When I hear that my podcast has helped somebody, it just, it's just, it's a reminder of why I'm here and why I'm doing this. And it means so much to me. So thank you for everyone who's listened and written a review. And also, you know, I hope that you write a review if you're a frequent listener and you haven't yet, or given us a like, a thumbs up or five stars or whatever. Whatever the platform you listen to us on allows us to do. And yeah, that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye.